this one's for my trap directors and editors this is the bullet hole transition it's pretty simple but it's just a lot of comping and a lot of things just to work through i've been using it for a lot and i use it in a lot of my trap videos so yeah here it is make sure you follow the instagram like and subscribe and notifications so we're going to be focusing on these two clips right here this yellow and purple one if we take a look at it we can see he's doing you know the pointy gun thing whatever and that's usually when i do the effect but you don't have to um so yeah we're going to add a muzzle flash to wherever he's going to do it we're going to have three bullet holes pop up and then we're going to zoom in to the middle one as you can see right here uh once the yellow clip ends it automatically cuts to the purple clip like it should but we have the purple clip being covered by the yellow clip well we kind of want that so when we mask it out the effect the clip is playing underneath the mask and so we can kind of zoom in to make it more of a uh, more of a easy transition smooth transition so it's not just black and then it goes into the effect all right so let's get into the tutorial you can use any bullet holes you find but today we're going to be using the bullet holes found in the cinepax gun effect you can download the free version there's a link in the description at cinepax store but i'm going to be using the paid version and this is like only part of the things that come with it just like pretty much the things we're going to be using today but it has sound effects it has like gun transitions and everything i recommend i 100 recommend getting it i've been using it for a long time don't even know that but i've been using it for a long ass time for all my videos but yeah so we're gonna be using the um glass bullet holes from cinepax and we're gonna be using some some muzzle flashes so if you look at it take a look what we have we're gonna probably we want a muzzle flash front so this is a good one the thing about the muzzle flashes is it doesn't it looks like a mini explosion it kind of gives it a different feel than like the regular mu muzzle flashes you see um or i could have like usually the muzzle flashes are like this and they this one just kind of looks more uh actiony if that makes sense all right so i'm just gonna pick one and stop stalling so i'm gonna pick this one which is fine so let me go back to my regular screen i'm gonna drag this muzzle flash what is it this one i'm gonna drag it onto my clip and so if you take a look at it we have this muzzle flash it's too long and not where we want it so i'm going to right click the muzzle flash speed duration i'm going to speed this up to about 300 and look at that it's already keyed i don't have to press lighten or anything so i'm gonna have a one muzzle flash start at the beginning of my clip and you can see that first frame of the muzzle flash there is no muzzle flash so if i go one frame in the beginning there's a muzzle flash i'm just going to go ahead and cut that move it to the beginning of my clips now i'm going to click on my muzzle flash, change the effect controls, and then move the position to where his hand is. Now, you can use this muzzle flash exactly like this, but in my opinion, it's a little, it's a little too uh, dark, if that makes sense, like it's too noticeable. So I'm just gonna change this to color dodge, just because that's how I like it, how I like it to look. You definitely don't have to since it's pre-keyed, but yeah. So if you take a look at it, boom. Does that kind of like a mini explosion. Um, it looks a little too slow still for me, so I'm going to speed it up to 600 because gun firing is fast. Like, you really can't really, like, you can see the flash, but you can't see the flash for seconds. So, that's okay. I'm going to keep it like this since we're going to have bullet holes covering the screen. So, I'm going to add two more of these muzzle flashes. I'm going to have one right here, probably one right here since it looks like his finger is, like, actuating the gun. So, I'm going to select my muzzle flash, hold alt, and then drag it up. That will duplicate it, and I'm going to drag this to where my cursor is. I'm gonna make sure the top muzzle flash is selected, position, I'm gonna move it to where his hand is, and I'm gonna do this one more time. If you look at it, probably right here, right before his hand moves up. One more time, duplicate the muzzle flash, move it to where my cursor is. So if you look at it, we'll have muzzle flashes following his hand. This one, I'm probably gonna make it a little bit bigger since this is gonna be the biggest bullet hole, and I'm gonna move it this way. So if you look at it, boom, we have something like this. All right, now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to nest this whole sequence just because I'm editing in my music video timeline. I don't want you guys to get confused. So I'm just gonna nest it. So we clean up the timeline a little bit and I'm gonna go into the nest so we can kind of see what's going on. So this is exactly all the clips you have in the effect. Here, let me long it is, and if you look at it, boom. So now we need to add more video tracks so we can add the bullet holes. I'm gonna go to the top layer, which is video 17, add track and then it kind of added track at the bottom. So I'm going to add, click add tracks this time. And then right here where it says after video 18, I'm gonna add, I guess, two more tracks, which is fine. So if you scroll up, we'll have three empty tracks right here. Now we need to add the bullet holes. So I'm gonna scroll to which bullet holes I want. 
so with this tutorial i'm going to use um, a single bullet hole but if i was doing it myself i would definitely use this this three glass bullet hole so i just have it's less layers i have to work with and less work i have to put bullet holes in the video but for you guys to get kind of the understanding i'm going to use let's just say uh this one because i i usually use this one okay so what is that bullet hole one okay drag that on i'm going to grab the bullet hole and drag it onto my first frame because that's where my first muzzle flash was you can see the bullet hole is already being created but it's nowhere near where we need it to be he's somehow shooting you know kind of right here and the bullet hole is coming up and technically this is where i want my third bullet hole at so we can zoom in for an easy transition so i'm just going to click the bullet hole and then move it to wherever kind of like right here if you look at it, it looks something like this and usually i kind of either make these smaller or larger kind of give it a different like differentiate each one of them but we're just going to keep this the same size right now so if you look at it, it looks something like that now we have a quick other shoot as in like him firing pretty fast so right here so we kind of need to move the next bullet hole somewhere like around right here so do the same thing hold alt on your bullet hole hold alt grab click your bullet hole and drag it up now move the first frame to where your cursor is and now we need to move the position now and i'm going to move the position we will see how it looks right here so if you play it it looks something like that but then we have the final bullet hole kind of being right here so we definitely need to move this bullet hole i'm going to make it larger i'm going to rotate it a little bit and i'm going to move this down so if we look at it it does something like that and then for this final one we'll have a huge one right here that we can zoom into so right here is where the last shot should be so i'm just going to do the same thing i'm going to select my top bullet hole hold alt drag it up and then move the beginning to my cursor and i'm going to move the bullet hole to where the bullet should go through and if i play it it looks something like this i like to make the last bullet hole the biggest just because it'll be easier to mask out and transition now you can see how the bullet holes kind of overlay each other if we're being honest no one watching the video is going to notice that but technically glass can't break over itself like it'll just break in completely so if you look at like the other examples i've done this with it they were kind of separated out but since he didn't really move his hand that much you know it's fine but if we're really thinking about it no one's going to notice this but they're going to notice transition so what i like to do is i like to have a few seconds of the bullet holes on screen so it gives me time to actually transition and go into the second clip so meaning that my clip transitions too fast at in the back so I'm just going to scroll down to my clip transitions and I'm going to elongate this um, yellow clip. So if we do that and we take a look at it, it has a few seconds and it kind of cuts exactly where I want it to. So if we kind of start the transition, let's see about right here, I'm going to make a marker by pressing M on my keyboard. And this is where our transition will start and we can uh, keep this working. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to nest all of this except the bottom layer, the bottom performance, which is this clip. So I'm going to move this clip down and I'm going to highlight my performance as in the clip that's showing right now and all of these muzzle flashes. So here, let me make my videos a little bit smaller Do this. So I'm going to highlight all of these, all these bullet holes, muzzle flashes and performance. I'm going to highlight all of them and nest them. Okay, now what this can do is this gives us options to actually mask out and do a, a kind of a mask through transition without having any problems with where our bullet holes are. So I'm going to go to the marker we made of where we wanted to start the transition. I'm going to select the new nested sequence and I'm going to press or I'm going to split the clip. And now we can kind of start where the transition starts. So I'm going to select the clip we just split. I'm going to move it up so we don't get confused with this one. I'm going to go to the opacity. I'm going to change my fit to about 50% so I can see the bullet hole. I'm just going to make a mask around the bullet hole just like this. And then if you look at it, it will make a mask like this, which is kind of what we wanted to do. And now with my still nested sequence, I'm going to click inverted. And now if you look at it, if you watch it, there is the second clip behind it. So if I move the second clip underneath it, you can see something moving. You can see there's a difference in the clip, which is technically what we wanted. So after making your mask, there's an empty on the mask, but there's one more step we need to make. So 
We made a mask on the nested clip and now we need to nest it again just because it'll be easier for Premiere Pro to kind of do the transition and yada yada yada. But like I said before, I like to have a fade out. So what I'm gonna do before I nest it is I'm gonna duplicate this clip. I'm gonna select the bottom and I'm gonna click, uh, I'm gonna uncheck the invert. So you can see it looks regular again. It looks like the back, the basic clip. But what I'm gonna do with this clip is I'm going to split it. I'm gonna delete the rest of it and I'm gonna just cross fade it. That's all you have to do. So if you look at it, it fades out. And I like doing this because when it zooms in, it goes it fades out into the clip instead of just kind of like a oh there's another clip in the bullet hole it just looks cleaner in my opinion and that's just what i like to do so now we can move on to the zooming part which so if we click our top clip you can see there's still a mask on it we're gonna just want to right click nest it one more time and you can see the mask goes away in our effect controls now for the zooming part all we need to do is go to our effects search bar look up transform and then right under distort transform drag it onto your top clip now here's some game to make it even more nice. On your anchor point, go ahead and click that. You'll have this blue little dot. Go ahead and move that into the middle of your bullet hole. It'll move your whole clip, but with your anchor points and new points, you can see the numbers changed. Go ahead and copy that, those, and change those into the position. And then your clip will move to the, its original spot. And the reason we do this is because now if I change the scale, you can see it should technically scale into the bullet hole, but if we look at the anchor point, the anchor point has changed a little bit. So either I was off or something. So if we scale in, here, let me change the anchor point. Okay, so move the anchor point to the middle of this. Copy the keyframes. It'll do something like that. Now I'm gonna keyframe the scale, keyframe the position, keyframe the anchor point. I'm gonna go to kind of where I want the effect to end, which is right here this is where the transition will be completed i'm going to zoom in all the way you can see my anchor point is a little bit off but that's okay i'm just going to change the position to the middle of the bullet hole so you don't have to waste any more time zoom in as much as you can before your gpu breaks as you can see right here if you zoom in a little bit too much that's why i don't like using transform that much is because you can't really zoom in a lot unless you add another transform or you change the scale and it's just it needs a little bit more so now I'm gonna change the scale of video like I said you can do this from the start you don't have to mess with transform but the reason I like using transform is like if I uncheck this use composition shutter and change this to 100 it gives it a smooth motion blur which kind of makes your transition a little smoother to the eye okay as you can see right here our transition it kind of zooms through the bullet hole but doesn't complete it because our transform wasn't working so now I'm just gonna go to the beginning of the clip scroll all the way up and then I'm gonna keyframe the scale and position and kind of where it goes to the end of the transition which is about right here I'm looking right here at the keyframes video to load and I'm gonna just increase this scale up just like this so it the whole um, transition is covered in black as you can see and now I'm going to cut this clip now and then delete the excess because we technically don't need it so now if you look at it, take a look at it, we'll have this transition, which is, looks okay, but if you guys notice something, it, however, we zoom into the bullet hole, we have the bullet hole underneath it that we faded out. It's not following it, staying there, and that looks super ugly, but don't worry. All we need to do is select the top clip, which is the bullet hole zooming in. Go ahead and right click it, click copy. Now select the bottom clip, which is this bullet hole fading out. Right click it, paste attributes. Now I'm going to, only select the opacity. Actually, I'm gonna uncheck the opacity because that is our mask, but I'm gonna make sure our scale and attributes and our effects transform are selected. Click okay. Now, if we do this, I'm gonna save it and then we RAM preview it. If, after you copy it, as you can see, it kind of zooms into the bullet hole and it fades out. A couple things, I had to nest the bullet hole that we faded out because I forgot to do that. And if you don't do that, it won't follow it. But yeah, so if you look at it now, that's the transition. Now all I have to do is unmute this bottom clip. This is the final output of the video. If you look at it, he shoots three times and then zooms in. Now probably in the preview, I probably added more effects to it. It just so it gives it a little oomph with my presets that aren't available yet. But yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. Leave a like, leave a comment if we want to see next. Tell me how you felt. Uh, subscribe, follow my Instagram. Peace out later.